Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, Pennsylvania, and I am right here each and every week at this time on this station to bring you, the landowner, the information that you need regarding natural gas development. At the Clark Law Firm, I focus on land owner oil and gas right owner representation. I have not, I do not, and I will not represent gas or pipeline companies. I represent the Pennsylvania landowner, royalty owner for such things as gas leases, gas lease negotiation, pipeline agreements, pipeline, water line negotiations, reviews, and consultations, Cabot multi-unit well consent requests. Do reviews and consultations for those quite often. Really recommend you give us a call if you have a Cabot multi-unit well request. Give us a call. Get some assistance. Those reviews and consultations on the multi-unit well requests typically take about an hour extremely valuable all of the clients that I've represented to date who have signed multi-unit well requests with Cabot have signed not the form that was sent to them but we have changed the language to protect the landowner and then only then when they determine and understand it and realize that in their case it is in their best interest to sign the edited and changed document then the client signs. The client does not simply sign the documents that's presented to them. And keep in mind, remember the show is never specific advice for anyone other than get specific advice from someone who's working for you, not somebody who is working for the company. And these multi-unit well consent forms presented by Cabot should be reviewed and you should have a consultation with an attorney because it may not be in your best interest to sign that document. In some cases, it may be, but you have to understand your specific case. And that's often the same with many different types of agreements. But just to wrap up, the Cabot Multi-Unit Well Request Forms. Every client that I've ever represented who have signed these forms has negotiated changes to that document and you need to do the same. You need to do the same. If you have a Cabot multi-unit well request form, call the Clark Law Firm today, 570-307-0702. That is 570-307-0702. There are things that we regularly do, that I regularly do and negotiate with these documents, which I absolutely believe is a strong benefit to the landowner. And there may be situations where you say, hey, look, this is absolutely not something that I want to sign, but you must understand your circumstances. You are not under any legal obligation to sign these requests. However, and again, it may or it may not be in your best interest to sign. But I don't care what we're talking about. Boy, oh boy, we have to learn mistakes that we've made maybe ourselves in the past by signing documents because we listen to the gas company land man who works for the gas company or employee or representative, and we listen to what they've told us which is the information that they want us to hear. And then we have signed based upon those representations and not going out and getting information from somebody who's there to help you, who's working for you, whose goal is to do everything they can to help and make this situation best for you. We have seen many, many people make that mistake, and I'm, mistake, and I'm sure many of the listeners have done that. Let's not repeat that mistake. Call us today. Sorry, I hate to sound that commercial, but call 
888-888-0702. Give us a call. Learn about the review and consultation services. Every client who has signed multi-unit well request has signed documents, in my opinion, that are certainly better for them. And in some cases, significantly better for them. But I'll tell you this, if you didn't get assistance from somebody working for you, familiar with this, understands it, understands negotiation, understands leverage, understands the market and what may be changed, my opinion, strongly, you are making an enormous mistake. These contracts, whether it's a multi-unit well consent, production allocation agreement, amendment modification and ratification of your lease, pipeline agreements, they will typically last for decades upon decades. And in some cases, they literally will last century or more, a century or more. We have seen the power that bad gas leases have had for thousands and thousands of people. We have seen how royalty deductions have been maximized in the favor of the company to the detriment of the landowner. We have seen how this works. How do we make the same mistakes again and say, oh, okay, yeah, here, give me the document, I'll sign it. Stop signing, get information. I would love to help you, it's what I do. I love my job, but if you don't call me, Please call somebody who knows what they're doing, who is there to help assist and work for you, not the gas company. It's a broken record, but my heavens, I know people are signing these multi-unit well consent documents. As an example, time and time and time and time and time and time again, based solely on what they're being told by the people who want them to sign the documents. Think about that. They want you to sign it. They're only going to tell you the information they want you to hear. You need to get your own information. And I stress that it may well be in your best interest, but you have to look at this because it may not be in your best interest, but it may be in your best interest to sign. But if you are signing, what we do is we limit the impact of that document. We don't our clients, my clients don't sign these blanket, wide open, multi-unit well consent forms because when we do our review and consultation, they understand them, they are educated and they're informed. They understand that, hey, this is in my best interest, it's not in my best interest, and if I'm going to sign it, even if it is in my best interest, there are things that I can do to limit its impact to benefit me, and I am going to do that. And those things may be enormous. They may, may be enormous. The difference of changing that language or not. So when you can do that, and a review and consultation typically takes one hour of time, how are you not doing it? How are you not doing it? And I'm gonna tell you, I am so blessed and I'm busy, and I love what I do, and I'm ready and willing to work my butt off. So I don't care. It's not that I have nothing to do and I'm sitting around here twiddling my thumbs. I want to help you. I don't want to see more and more people sign bad agreements. I don't. Go to the websites. Look at the testimonials. Talk to somebody that I've represented. Learn what we do. Learn what I do. I want to help you. And I want to see people stop simply signing these agreements. Call the office learn what I do, learn what we do, see if we can help you. And if we can't help you or you don't like what you hear, and I don't care where you are located because I have clients all across Pennsylvania and have clients represented all across the country and in other countries who have property in Pennsylvania. And I don't care if it's one acre or if it's 10,000 acres or more. I want to help you if I can. And I'm going to be honest and I'm going to tell you if I can help you and we're going to give you the advice you need. And if it's in your best interest, any document, and there's no way to change it and it's in your best interest to do it, you'll understand it. You'll recognize why we can't change it and you'll go ahead and you'll move forward and you'll probably have spent maybe an hour or two of time and you can go to bed at night very comfortably. 
You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. But to continue on these multi-unit well consents, I may be able to, and through discussions you may see, how you can improve that document and how in some cases you may considerably improve that document to your benefit. But you need to get that specific advice. I stress again, my clients who have signed Cabot multi-unit well request forms have not signed the documents that have been presented in the way they were originally presented. We have negotiated changes to the benefit of the client. And these, in some cases, are substantial benefits. But if you don't call, and if you don't have a review and consultation, and you don't find out what your options are, also find out really, is this in your best interest or is it not? That's the starting point. Then, if it makes sense for you to sign, if it is in your interest, how can we improve the document? And so far in every case that a client has signed, and I'm sure I have no reason to think it'll change, we improve the document before signing. So they're signing a better document. And depending on the circumstances, we may be able to improve this situation, the document, significantly. But we have to look at your individual situation and you have to get specific advice because your position and what is right for you, for you, may not be what's right for your next door neighbor. Your leases may be different. The time frames of your leases may be different. I tell a story in one case at a client where had they signed a multi-unit well request, their lease almost certainly would have stayed valid and active. If they didn't sign it, their lease within a couple months would expire and then they could do a new lease with additional compensation. And a, their old lease was very bad lease. It had 12 and percent with full deductions. New lease gets increased royal, royalty percentage and gets a true no deduction royalty provision. So a review and consultation taking an hour to start this off shows us that, hey, signing this could preserve your lease, meaning you're stuck at 12.5% with full deductions for the life of this lease, which could be 50 to 100 years or more. Or we can allow, not sign, your lease will most likely expire, which it did. And then you can negotiate at the time, it was $1,000 is what it was, uh, and this is recently, $1,000 per acre, 15% royalty, so an increase from 125 to 15% and now having no deductions. So if you had, if you had 100 acres, the difference would have been by a review and consultation, a one hour, no percentages or anything like that, an hourly fee for one hour, you find out, hey, I shouldn't sign this and here's the reasons why. Then fast forward several months into the future, new lease offer, I have 100 acres, 1,000 an acre, now I get a $100,000 check Oh, and by the way, my royalty percentage has now gone up from 12.5 to 15, and now I truly have a no-deduction royalty provision. It all started with a phone call. Then the person learned what was going on, understood their rights, and said, hey, this is great. Now I have a plan. That is one example. Now, you could have another person we look at it and say, wow, this agreement is actually very beneficial to you. And I really think you should sign it, but but we need to put some limitations and make some changes so this doesn't have negative effects in the future that we're not looking at today. So in that person's situation, here's what we're going to do. We're going to amend and edit this multi-unit well consent document. So it is in your interest to sign it, but it's not overly aggressive in the company's favor. And so therefore, you're not going to have 
unforeseen negative consequences or negative consequences that we can foresee that we go ahead and defend against. Get specific advice. We're talking about Cabot multi-unit well consents. Chesapeake is, is presenting, excuse me, to people in Bradford and Susquehanna counties and anywhere Chesapeake is, production allocation agreements. Same principle, but in fact, these production allocation agreements, I recently did a show on this, they're terrible in my opinion. They're way, way worse than the multi-unit well consent documents. But don't think, oh, okay, well, the multi-unit well consent, they're not that bad, so I can just go ahead and sign it. No, 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 no. Remember, we're always changing those before clients sign. But the production allocation agreement is a whole other set of problems because that document really amends and changes your lease. I'm up against it here in the first section. You're listening to all things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I have not, I do not, and I will not represent gas or pipeline companies. If you have any natural gas agreement, unitization issue, royalty issue, breach of contract issue, anything related to oil and natural gas in Pennsylvania, regardless of your location, give us a call, see if we can help you. 570 307 0702. 570-307-0702. I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember to join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. I, Doug Clark, have been doing this show, the show for landowners, each and every week since 2010. We're in our eighth year of this show, which gives you, I hope, the idea of the type of information that's out there, the experience and knowledge that is out there. If I can help you, I want to help you. Remember, regardless of your location, I have clients all across the western part of the state, Tioga, Bradford, Lycoming, Susquehanna, and on and on and on and on. So. Regardless of your location, I do reviews, consultations, representation, do these reviews, consultations, often over the telephone, but in the office as well. Everyone's always welcome to come to the office. But remember, do not be discouraged or fear distance. I have, I represented recently a woman in her 80s, and she is in Washington County, which is one of the most southwestern counties in Pennsylvania. And that's not unusual. I've represented several people in their 80s in great distances away. You would be surprised. And I can promise you that if distance appears to be any issue, it'll be the first thing we talk about. Because I am here to help you. That's my goal. You're listening again to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm, here every week at this time on this station. And you can call the office, learn about reviews, consultations. Learn about representation, Tioga County. Four, if you have a vertical well that is holding your lease and you're getting shut in and shut in only, call my office. I'm, I'm investigating this issue and I want to see if I can help you. 570-307-0702. Another piece of general advice. If you think you have a problem with the company, such as Tioga County, Sweppy is holding you by a vertical well that's not producing, and they're sending you what are called shut-in payments year after year. Or if you're a, a person who's getting what are called delayed rental payments year after year. Give us a call if you think there's an issue. I uh, Many times there are, and I want to see if I can help you. But let me give this general piece of advice. If you think you have an issue, do not do not cash the shut-in royalty payment or the delayed rental payment or any other type of payment until you consult with an attorney and get advice should you cash it. I often get calls from people and I look at things and I say, hmm, I think you may have something here. 
When did you get your last shut-in payment, your last delayed rental payment? When did you get the pipeline payment? And the client says, well, I just got it last month. And I say, boy, please tell me you didn't cash it. And they say, oh, well, yeah, I cashed it. That may give the company in certain circumstances a very strong defense. Not all, but it may. So if you think there's an issue and you're getting shut in, delayed rental, maybe a pipeline option payment, and you think there's an issue, call an attorney who knows what they're doing and call me 570-307-0702 and do that and have a review, consultation, whatever it is, before you cash the check because you may be giving up rights and cashing the check. Remember, this is general advice, but if you think there's an issue, do not cash the check and get legal advice. You're listening to Attorney Doug Clark. This is All Things Marcellus. I'm here each and every week at this time on this station. been doing the show again for eight years. Let me just put a quick bow on, and this same thing applies for virtually all agreements, but just for a moment, on the Cabot Multi-Unit Well Consents. They're everywhere. So many people are getting them, and so many people are simply signing them and returning them. Please understand, in my most sincere opinion, that you're making a mistake if you're doing that. You really should have a review and consultation to understand where are you in this development? How will this impact you? Should you? you sign it. Understand that you don't have to sign it. Should you sign it? And if you should, my opinion, you should definitely negotiate to change language in that document. And I have had clients where I have been extremely pleased from where it started to where it ended. I can't and I won't get into detail on that on this in the show. But for specific legal advice for someone who's been looking at this issue for well over a year in many different phases and with clients in all kinds of different positions, I am extremely confident that within an hour and at most two, I can give you the guidance, recommendations, and the suggestions you need to make the right decision. And we may, in every case so far, we've improved these documents. And we may be able to substantially improve your situation. However, we need to look at your specific situation. And if it's something that there isn't the ability to substantially improve it, well, we'll improve it as we can, the best we can, and we'll get in and out in a cost-effective manner. The goal of any attorney shouldn't be to bill their clients. It should be to help their clients. And that's what I do. 570-307-0702. Give us a call, learn about reviews and consultations and all the other services that I provide and see if I'm right for you. See if we can help you. I really want to hear from you. Okay. Let's turn the page. Let's, let's move on to the theme that I had my, my I scribbled down this. Like I said, I've been doing the show for eight years. In the first show, I literally wrote down every single word before their show. I'd never done a radio show, no idea in the world what I was doing. I wrote every single word, and I read every single word. Today, I jot down some notes, and I turn it on, and we start going. Um, so my notes today was to talk about tricks that companies use and do. And that's something that probably everybody understands. And certainly many people out there, um, thousands, tens of thousands probably, at least thousands, have felt as though they've been tricked in this process. And in my opinion, they feel that for good reason. You know, for good reason. As simple as, oh yeah, there won't be deductions, there won't be deductions. They get royalty checks, they see deductions. And the person who told them, there were not going to be deductions, is long gone. Can't find that person anymore. And company says, well, nope, this is what the agreement says. And so therefore, this is how we operate. And look, that is your signature there, right? So we are allowed to take deductions. Or, well, these aren't really deductions. 
that may be the term that you as the landowner use, but us as the company, we're not seeing this as a deduction from your royalty check. We're just not giving you certain benefits that you think you should have. So today, we have seen the evolution of this royalty language. It's still evolving. It's still evolving, but we've seen. So anyone who signs an oil and gas lease today or for the last few years, anyone who signs and has not had an attorney who knows what they're doing, assisting them, review and consultation at bare minimum, and then they get deductions and they didn't think they were going to, I mean this respectfully, but shame on you. You, you had the chance to get information and to get the right information from someone working for you, but you didn't do that. And now you're surprised about deductions. Well, a good attorney would be able to advise you, here's what this language means and here's how it's going to be interpreted or here how, here's how it will most likely be interpreted. And these can be the differences. And I don't make this up. These can be the differences of hundreds of thousands of dollars in royalty payments and truly in cases into the millions of dollars, depending upon your acreage. And for some reason, people are still relying on the other side, the side that stands the benefit by you signing a bad agreement. Think about that. The side who benefits from you signing a bad agreement. That is who people continue to listen to as they enter into bad agreement after bad agreement after bad agreement. And it just keeps continuing and we have to stop it. We have to stop it. Like I said before, phone call many times can change agreements into hundreds of thousands of dollars to the benefit. Not every time, but many times. The worst thing that happens is you understand everything and you're informed. And now, you know, when you sign, there's, you know, the reasons you're signing and you know that it's in your best interest or you identify leverage that you didn't know you had that you now realize that the language presented to you that says it wouldn't be with deductions. Now you understand how it really will be with deductions and in cases. And I had a couple of them within the last 30 days where we negotiated away royalties that originally allowed for deductions that now don't. And the royalty benefit for those clients, I am certain as long as there's gas there and we know the area and we know there is that it will result in tens of thousands and most likely hundreds of thousands of dollars in increased royalty and had the people just signed, had they listened to these statements, Oh, well, yeah, this wouldn't be no deductions. This would be no deductions. They would have missed out on all of that, but no, thankfully they listened to all things Marcellus each and every week at this time on this station, they picked up the phone. They called 570-307-0702. We started with the review and consultation. We identified what the issues were and they said, wow, great. Thank you. Let's go forward. Let's see if we can change that language. And in this case we did, we changed it and it's going to benefit the people immensely compared to what they were presented. And it started with a review and consultation. I know it's a broken record, but I do them time and time again, and they're just work. That's the reality. They just work and let it work for you. See if it's right for you. See if we can help you. 570-307-0702. Any oil and gas related matter. 570-307-0702. I'm going to talk about more tricks here in the next segments coming up. You know, to me, they're fascinating. They're fascinating. Unfortunately, they exist, but what they are is pretty amazing. I'll get into them here in the next segment. Stay tuned. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I'm here each and every week at this time on this station. I'll be right back.
Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Again, you can contact the office, learn if we can help you, see what we do, see if we're right for you, regardless of your location. 570-307-0702. That's 570-307-0702. Again, regardless of your location. Remember, I've been doing this show for eight years. If you missed the show, you can go to the websites. And boy, I hope you're visiting our websites. PAGasleaseAttorney.com. That's PAGasleaseAttorney.com. Also, PipelineAttorney.com. Pipelines, pipelines, pipelines. If you have a pipeline agreement, and if you're not going to PipelineAttorney.com, I hope that the only reason is because you do not have a computer. Go to PipelineAttorney.com. Whether you're looking to learn more about the Clark Law Firm and me, Attorney Doug Clark, or if you're looking for information, remember the websites as well as the show are general information, not specific advice, but PipelineAttorney.com has all kinds of information that you should be looking at before you sign anything. But even before you sign, you should be going to PipelineAttorney.com and then going to an attorney who knows what they're doing to help you. I have represented clients in negotiations, reviews, consultations with over 70 different pipeline company agreements. Again, giving you the idea of experience out there. So if this is your second agreement or your neighbor did one, understand that is the smallest of sample of experience. You need to make sure you're not leaving something on the table. Just in the last month, client's offer increased well over $100,000 from what they were going to sign because we did a review and consultation. We got to make sure you're not leaving this money on the table. And that you're getting, I, I say it all the time because it's so important, Advice from somebody who's working for you, giving you the information that you need to know for you, not giving you the information that the company wants you to have. When they're giving you the information, they control exactly what goes into your ears. They control exactly what they say. And they're not going to tell you, oh, by the way, you have all kinds of leverage. And if you ask for $300,000 instead of the $100,000 we are offering, we'll pay it to you. We'll kick and scream and we'll hem and haw and we'll say you're crazy. But ultimately, we'll pay it to you. You just got to ask and go through that process. They're not going to do that. They're not. So you need to understand in your situation, similar situations, what has occurred in the past with this company, other companies, what is your negotiation leverage? What is your own personal risk tolerance to decide what can I do to maximize this situation? And I have many, many times routinely have clients who contact us, do reviews and consultations, and they end up signing for significantly higher compensation than what was offered and much, much, much better pipeline agreements than what was offered. It, that happens all the time and virtually every single time. So why we're still signing these agreements? Because the company lamb says, oh, we're going to make you rich. We're going to make you rich. We're going to make you rich here. You're going to be rich, 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 rich. Here's my pen. Why we're doing that, I don't know. We need to stop it. Again, stop signing bad agreements. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. And I know I get fired up. I get upset because I think about and I'll say this often is because it's again, darn it, it's true. I think about my parents. I think about my grandparents. I think about the people who grew up on Airport Road and Dime Road and Parks Township, Armstrong County, where I grew up, steelworker, farmer area. And I think about those people being taken advantage of, and it makes me sick. And it still happens. And look, it's okay that they have a job to do. But we have to recognize that we have a job to do, and our job is to protect ourselves. And if you don't want to protect yourself, protect your family and protect your property. But we have to stop being taken advantage of. And like I say, these reviews and consultations, because I know sometimes people say, oh, lawyers, lawyers, lawyers. Look, with anything, there's good lawyers, there's bad lawyers. 
I'd like to think of myself as a very good lawyer. I know what's in my heart and I know what's in my mind. And so the reviews and consultations, if you have any hesitation, they're so good because they're usually an hour or two. And then you get a really good basis of information, which may be all you need. Or you may say, okay, I'm going to take it from here. From, uh, from here, I'm going to go on my own. Or you may say, hey, look, you know what? This is really great information. Uh, I see this plan. I love it. Will you go ahead? Can we continue to work together? And the answer is virtually always yes. But that's your option. Your option. But what we have to stop doing is having people afraid to call an attorney who knows what they're doing, afraid to call me because you're afraid of the distance. Don't be afraid of the distance. I have clients, again, all over Pennsylvania in the country and other countries at times. So don't worry about that. Call 570-307-0702. Do an intake and see if we're right for you. And if we are, wonderful. And if we aren't, that's okay too. You just made a phone call. And like I said, it's not that I'm sitting here in my office. I'm sitting in my office saying, oh my gosh, I hope this phone rings. I hope the phone rings. I'm sitting in my office hoping that every person who's going to sign a document is either calling me or somebody else who knows what they're doing, who is working for them, who's fighting for them, who's going to give them the best possible advice and guide them to make sure they're doing the best they can for themselves, their children, and their family. Just like what I want to happen to my parents, my grandparents, and everybody else in the area of Parks Township, Airport Road, Dime Road, and every other place in Pennsylvania. Because we need people working for you, and we need to stop allowing companies, my opinion, to take advantage of our rural, I grew up in rural, very rural Pennsylvania, stop taking advantage Stop taking advantage of our kindness, our history of gentlemen's agreements, shaking hands, that what the person who's standing there talking to you about, the person in front of you is telling you the truth and telling you what you need to know. We need to let, we need to stop, stop being taken advantage of in this way. Meaning again, they have a job to do and that is okay, but we need to understand it. And we need to say, okay, thank you. I appreciate all of this information. I'm going to review it. I'm going to consider it. And I'll get back to you. And then you go get information from somebody working for you to make sure that you're not missing anything. To make sure that the company landman who works for the company and not you, to make sure that they didn't leave anything out. To make sure that you understand your leverage and the documents you're presented. And I'll tell you, too many times, in my opinion, you're not getting the information you need from the other side. But again, why would you? Why would you? You need to get the information from somebody working for you. This is All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark. I'm here every, each and every week at this time on this station. Now, let's turn to tricks. So it's not just me saying tricks. Let's turn to some tricks courtroom exhibit number one addendum presented to landowner with the heading in bold printed text no surface use this is a gas lease addendum that says no surface use the landowner wanted a gas lease where the company could not go onto the property and conduct any operations like drilling roadways pipelines any type of operations on the property. So they said to the land man who works for the company and not them, says, hey, we would like to have no surface use lease, a no surface lease where you can't use our surface. So Lamis says, okay, comes back and hands the landowner or sends the landowner, whatever the case may be, an addendum that says no surface use. Landowner says, okay, this is what I wanted. Now this is attractive. I think I'm going to sign. Landowner goes to read through it and it says the following. Notwithstanding any provision contained in the lease to the contrary. Landowner may just tune out at that point. What the heck is that? Notwithstanding any provision contained in this lease to the contrary. 
Again, notwithstanding any provision contained in this lease to the contrary. What the heck does that mean? Most people don't know. It's pretty legalese. What it really means is essentially despite. So despite anything else, and then it goes on, lessee is, meaning lessee company, prohibited from using the surface of the leased premises, so the surface of your property, for any purpose other than conducting survey and seismic operations without the prior written consent of the lessor, which is the landowner. If it stopped there, then we'd be okay. But trick alert, it doesn't stop there. It goes on to state, which such consent may not be unreasonably withheld. So this company presented an addendum to the landowner indicating that it is a no surface use provision. No surface use. Goes on to say, is, say we can't touch the surface of your property unless you agree in writing. And then it says, but you cannot unreasonably withhold your consent. So if we want to put it on your property and you say, no, I'm not going to consent. Remember, I have a no surface use lease. That's what I wanted. That's what you gave me. Read this. It says no surface use. And they say, yeah, read it. And at the end, it says you can't unreasonably withhold your written permission. We want to do this. And you withholding your permission is unreasonable. So therefore, we're going to do it. This is not a no surface use lease. And quite frankly, it's not even close. It is not even close. But this landowner thought that they had a no surface use lease. Review and consultation. Explain to them this isn't what it appears to be. And long story short, the language gets modified and they actually enter into a true no surface lease. Versus they sign the document. Company comes out, wants to put a pad on, wants to put a pipeline on, wants to put a roadway, wants to put an impoundment pond, whatever the case may be. Lander says, no, 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 you can't do it. Company says, oh, yes, we can. Read this. You signed it. Well, the landman told me, no, oh, no, no, you signed it. And you withholding consent is unreasonable, so we're going to do it. If you want to try to stop us, you know, sue us or take us to arbitration. Just one example of a trick. Man, that's a powerful trick. But there's more to come. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I'm here each and every week at this time on this station. Give us a call, 570-307-0702. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember, join me each and every week at this time on this station. Check out the websites, pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com, Today's show will be up Monday morning, tomorrow morning, as are many other shows, radio shows available on the website. So make sure you're checking them out. You can't join us each and every week at this time on this station. Go to pagasleaseattorney.com. Go to pipelineattorney.com. Check out the radio show, any other information available there. Also, again, you can call the office, learn more about reviews, consultations, Royalty representation, breach of gas leases, Cabot multi-unit wells, production allocation agreements from Chesapeake, shut in Tioga County. And if you have an older lease, and any lease, but a real big trend that I find extremely disturbing is people are being presented with gas lease amendment, modification, and ratifications. They are signing them because, well, I believe they're told that it's in their best interest when in reality it very well may not be. And we need to do reviews and consultations to identify why you have an amendment, modification, and ratification. And then do you need to do it? Why would you do it? And can you negotiate it? And in my opinion, I have seen multiple cases where I believe that the lease would terminate or has terminated, but reviews, or I'm sorry, but amendments and modifications and ratifications can be used to eliminate what that problem was, revive an old lease that would have probably or otherwise was terminated. We got to stop that. Those are enormous mistakes. 
amendments, modification, ratification, get assistance before you sign. You can call us 570-307-0702. This is an area where I see, in my, my opinion, it is killing people. It is killing landowners and killing opportunities. And the only reason that you would sign these documents in many cases is because you just don't have the information you need. And in my opinion, you sure as heck can't rely on the gas company, pipeline company to tell you, oh yeah, your lease is probably terminated. Or yeah, you could probably negotiate this for significant compensation, maybe increased royalty, maybe even a new lease. But no, they're not going to tell you those things if they apply. They're trying to get you to sign an amendment, modification, and ratification. We got to stop signing these documents. Either call me or call someone who knows what they're doing, but we have to stop signing these. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark. Let's let's uh, shotgun a couple tricks. All right, here's one. Uh, let me grab it. All right, here's one. It is a seismic testing agreement, seismic testing on the property. Haven't heard that in a while in some areas, but in some areas it's still occurring. So in this agreement that they ask you to sign, a little bit of a trick if you ask me, it says that this agreement, being the seismic agreement, shall survive any lease, sale, trade, or conveyance of the property, interest described above, and made after the execution date of this agreement, and that this agreement will be binding on successors or assigns. So what does that mean? Well, it means that this seismic agreement may last forever. It does not terminate when your gas lease terminates. It says this agreement shall survive any lease, sale, you sell the property, you convey it to someone else. Well, that person who buys the property is subject to this agreement unless it's terminated for another reason. That's probably not what you thought when they, when they tell you, oh, we have the right to do this. We can do it under your lease. Well, yeah, if you can, do it under the lease. But I don't want to sign an agreement necessarily that will last far beyond my lease and goes well beyond the lease rights. It's a little bit of a trick there, and it could be a big trick. That's trick one. Again, we'll just shotgun some. Southwestern. Hey, Southwestern Energy. They build well pads. Come back to people and say, hey, well, you know, we don't want to. There's a DEP regulation, and nine months after drilling, we have to minimize this well pad. And we don't want to do that. So, and, and that's to your benefit too. And so what we want to do is keep this pad at size and we want you to sign this waiver form so we don't have to minimize it. Again, not specific advice. Maybe you don't want them to minimize it, but maybe you do. But then the form that they present you, you would say, okay, well, if what you tell me is true and you don't want to minimize it because you may come out and drill more wells. Well, once you drill the last well, shouldn't you at least minimize it then? Again, please, this is just real quick as an example, much more to consider. But the what the paperwork is that they present doesn't say that, okay, we will make the pad smaller when we drill the last well. It says that you agree, that you wave and you agree that the well site, and maybe it's 15 acres, maybe it's 20, maybe it's 25, maybe it's only 10, but you agree that they do not have to restore that pad and that they can keep it to the original conditions and size until all the wells on the well site have been plugged. Plugged. So, in other words, if they drilled the last well tomorrow, and these wells last for 30 or 40 or 50 years, well, that pad will stay the same size until the last well was plugged. So maybe you would have wanted them to minimize it now and not wait 50 years especially if you got a monster of a pad sitting on your property so i think it's a little tricky to say oh yeah we want to keep your pad open um but then not explain that yeah no this pad will stay the same size so we have the right to keep it that way until the total end of the lease until the end of the lease and that may not be what you think you're signing in my experience and people i've talked to that's not what they've thought they were signing. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Arbitration. <laughs> the master, perhaps. Nah, deductions. Royalty deductions is the trick of tricks. But arbitration. Real quick. Oh, yeah, landowner. Arbitration. 
really good for you. Really good for you. Actually, it's great for you. Well, it's really good for you until you ask to eliminate the arbitration requirement in your lease. Find out how good that is for you and ask the company to get rid of it. If it's so good for you, they should get rid of it. I am dealing right now with several leases that I feel that are breached and most likely, I believe, have terminated. But they have mandatory arbitration provisions, which many do, which again, my opinion, absolutely should be avoided at all costs when possible. I'm going to say that again. Arbitration provisions should be avoided at all costs when possible. Companies love them. We don't. Arbitration. Go to arbitration. These leases say that the arbitration must be unanimous, meaning that you get three arbitrators and they all have to agree. Well, that's an obstacle. But at the same time, here's the real crazy obstacle. Of the three arbitrators, the company themselves picks one of them. You pick the other and either you both agree on the third person arbitrator or the two arbitrators, one that you pick, one that the company picks, they pick a third. Well, what do you think the company selected arbitrator is going to do? Do you think they're going to be inclined to roll unanimously in your favor or roll in the company's favor? Now, I don't want to cast aspersions. We don't know. But I'll tell you this. If I'm going in front of a three-panel arbitration panel, three-person arbitration panel, One of those people is selected, hand-selected by the company, and I need all three to roll in my favor in order to win this case. I'm very, very concerned. Arbitration, we want to avoid whenever possible. Unanimous arbitration is like a knife in the side. That is an unbelievable obstacle. But they put it in their agreements time and time again. Companies do. So, Let's talk about another arbitration where this other arbitration requires that the arbitrators must have substantial, here's the, here's the language, substantial experience in oil and gas industry with respect to natural gas drilling and operations. What does that mean? That the arbitrators selected are most likely going to be coming from the company side of the process. There's not a lot of guys out there, girls out there, women, men doing what I'm doing, fighting for the landowners and the landowners only. I do not have not and will not represent companies. But this provision is going to help ensure that the company to the company that any arbitrators are probably going to have a natural bias towards their side because they've been working for companies. That's how they've got that experience. Remember, Arbitration is fundamentally bad in these oil and gas leases and also in pipeline agreements and should be avoided whenever possible. I've done other shows on this. They avoid class actions. There's a reason why all your banking and credit card companies all use mandatory arbitration and it's not because it's good for you. I assure you of that. It's not because it's good for you. So listen, I'm up against it. I want to remind everybody, give us a call, see if we can help you. That's what I do. 570-307-0702. Cabot Multi-Unit Wells, Chesapeake Production Allocation Agreements, Tioga County, Sweppy Operations, Pipelines, Howard Energy. Give us a call. And remember, stop signing bad agreements. The land man works for the company, not you, the landowner. Doug Clark only represents landowners, royalty owners, has not, will not, and does not represent companies. Join me next week at this time on this station for all things Marcellus 570-307-0702. Have a wonderful week, everyone.